everybody. Welcome to round 49 in the English version. This is the WBC Talks. And uh, I want to introduce Sochi Lagarda. She's the director of the WBC University and she has a great message for you. Hi, Victor. I'm Mauricio Gill and the rest of our guests today. Well, this Monday, a new week, a new beginning. And to follow our tradition at the WBC talk, I'm going to make a small reflection on a, a subject that is good for everybody is to keep our mental health going well, okay? And today I'm going to share with you the idea that it's human to make mistakes. We all make mistakes and it's part of our human condition. We are in this life to learn actually from our mistakes. And now in the framework of the COVID, we are experiencing endless new situations which make us feel extremely vulnerable to the unknown. We don't know what's, what's going to happen tomorrow. Sometimes we don't know what's happening the same day, okay? So, and because of that, we don't know what is coming next week or next month, okay? The uncertain lead us to make mistakes due to the frustration and anxiety that that situation generates on us, okay? The whole circumstance that we are all living uh, at the COVID. The truth is that every mistake uh, every mistake we make, it's a good opportunity of learning, okay, that um, why an error cannot occupy all the time of our, of our mind, okay? Today we are going to review a strategy that will allow us how to get out uh, of the error at the mental level, okay? Maybe we... Uh, have the, the error in the heart, but we need to take it out from our mind, okay? When we make a mistake, we experience a feeling, the feeling of wanting to go back on time, okay? And make the right decision. But that is practically impossible. We cannot uh, go back on time. And because of that, the recommendation is that when we make mistakes, we must do the following. First, acknowledge the error. Accept that we made a mistake. Second, analyze the mistake. Analyze the error. And third, we must move forward, okay? That will help us to get out of the mistake uh, thought. The only thing we can do once the, the mistake has been made is to face it in the best possible way. People who train uh, their mind, they are mental strength, strength and they have the tools to cope with frustration, fear, and the uncertainty of life, okay? And is the uncertainty of life that make us uh, to make mistakes. Humility is the key word to admit that we have been wrong. We have to be a human in our daily life, okay? Intelligent people, uh, they accept, they do mistakes, that they commit errors, okay? And mature people have the ability to correct them, okay? An example of an error or a mistake, now that we are all at home, uh, we are in confinement, if, for example, when we react in a violent way, when we listen to a very bad news, okay, we get angry because what we listen at the news. But another example is that, uh, for example, when you have an argue and you don't agree with your son, with your daughter, your wife, then you slam the door, you uh, are disrespectful to them with no reason. So let's think about it. Let's thing when we do have, a, when we take those actions, okay? We all have a new reality. Let's try to be the best version of ourselves. Let's be safe. 
let's have the vision of a better tomorrow, of a better future. And have a wonderful week, have a great day. And the panel is yours, Mauricio, Victor, and Jill. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sochil. And now let me introduce Mauricio Suleiman. He's the president of the World Boxing Council. Mauricio, welcome. Your microphone. Hello, uh, I'm very happy to see all of you. Uh, this is a very special panel. Uh, Jill, how are you? Good afternoon. Oh, and I cannot wait to, to get this going and, and share and praise and recognize all of you who are real heroes uh, of humanity, real heroes of uh, today's world and uh, your actions do not go unnoticed. This is a moment where we need to go deep into reflection and uh, stay open and, and, and move. We cannot remain quiet. You are so important and you are so honorable and so uh, valuable. And uh, we need to make this clear and to uh, share to the world the value of what you do and how you uh, day after day going to a fight where there is no referee, where there is no rules, but yet you are there to protect all of us. So welcome, and I'm very excited, very happy, and cannot wait to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Mauricio. Now, Jill Diamond from New York. New York. I mean, we have an East Coast panel, basically, right? <laughs> so... The dictionary defines the word hero as a person of distinguished courage or ability, admired by his or her brave deeds and noble qualities. Those on our panel today are some of our finest heroes. Essential workers, all of whom have been involved in boxing. They are adjusting to the new norm in a way that you or I may never have to. Out in the streets or online, they are tasked to perform duties made far more difficult from when the world was a handshake instead of an elbow bump. But the principles of boxing, respect, discipline, diversity, sportsmanship, still guide us even when the arenas are closed and the fight is called. Given the uncertainty of our times, let's find out how the values implicit in our sports are guiding them through the difficult things that they have to do now. But before we begin, I want to please show a tweet that was sent out by Mauricio on Saturday night because it's important. Can we do that, Victor? Yes, give me a second. Gilbert, if you can show the graphic that I sent. I think this basically says it all. And Mauricio, would you like to add something to this before I introduce our panel and we begin? Well, it is, it is, uh, it is so sensitive because uh, we understand that the actions of very few always carry on and hurt the, the complete universe. And it is so unfortunate because uh, while we are all uh, so fragile and uh, the first responders on the front line uh, in the, both in the medicine and the, in the armed forces in any activity have kept the world safe, have uh, given their lives. Uh, they have put their lives on the line during this horrible pandemic. And then just uh, one action snaps and creates this horrible current scenario in, uh, in the USA. I, I cry, my heart cries for, for the so many like you that are so honorable, so uh, important. And uh, you know, I have been in life-threatening situations 
and when that happens and you experience something, that's when you value uh, what, uh, what you do. And I just feel uh, we need to act and we need to be very vocal and stop the nonsense, stop those little people that are going out and making all these disruptions because that is not what uh, people really are. And uh, I just want to make sure that the world knows that the WBC, all of us praise and are thankful to all of you in the front line. Thank you, Mauricio. So first I'm gonna go around and introduce everyone because they're all unique. So Monica's world champion, vice president of Metro and a school teacher. How are you doing, Sonia? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. Dumash Lightning Nyasov, pro boxer, policeman. You came here from Kazakhstan and they did a film about you, didn't they? You're still a celebrity in Kazakhstan and you're working my old neighborhood, Coney Island. I can't even imagine what that must be like now. Do you have anything you want to say? You're muted. Hit your, you have to hit the um, microphone. No, we cannot hear you. Maybe you have to activate your microphone. Oh, there you go. Hit again the microphone. No. No sound. We'll come back to you. Brett? school social worker during a time when I'm sure you're dealing with extreme problems with rising addiction problems, disconnection problems, and you're having to do it all online instead of person to person. So welcome, anything you would like to say? Um, just thank you for having me here. Thank you everyone here, you guys are all heroes. And I mean, it's definitely a tough time for all of us, especially in the city, because this remote learning is all new to us. So within a week we had to learn how to develop a whole program and try to meet meet the students and their families' needs. Right. We'll get Nicole, with the beautiful pictures. <laughs> I love the pictures that you sent us. Nicole Russell, Golden Gloves fighter and nurse extraordinaire. How are you doing, Nicole? Good. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Michael Reno. The last time I was gonna see you was March 13th at Madison Square Garden. We had designed the belts for the Battle of the Bulge. We were heading to the stadium and Bobby McGuire said, forget about it. They just shut down boxing. I don't know how you guys recovered from that. How are you doing, Michael? You just turned on your mute. Mm -hmm. Turn off your mute now. <laughs> All right. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, it was uh, the day before our show or the day of our show. They just, uh, everything shut down that day. Um, but, uh, you know, our boxing show w was canceled. Unfortunately, the uh, charities thing, we weren't able to donate to those charities. But, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's the least of our problems. Right. We want to get to that. And David... You are not out there in the streets, but your trucks are. I mean, what would we do without the RX water and the nutrition that we need at this time? Seriously. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're happy we can help in any way. Hmm? We're happy we can help in any way. Um, it's really surreal what's happened so far this year. Um, and I'm always looking for the silver lining. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of good come out of this. You know, I'm trying to not really immense myself in some of the you know, some of the news, because you could really get depressed, you know, watching it. Um, yeah. But I'm actually, this is the first time I've been in Illinois. I actually traveled out here on Saturday uh, to come to Chicago, and part of the trip was going to be Minneapolis. Um, so right now, where I am here to see some of the people I'm meeting with truly affected by this, um, you know, their livelihoods, and then kind of looking back on the news and some of the posts that the Mosh made with, with the NYPD, it's just, it's heartbreaking what's going on right now. It is. And the star of our show who just disappeared off her screen. 
And Tierra, why are you the star of our show besides the fact that you're a 10 and 0, <laughs> six KOs? Uh, let me think what else, a bronze world champion, a US national champion, and the 2019 um, youth uh, winner, winner of police of the year, winner of health, humanity for, I mean, it's mind boggling. But why are you the star of our show today? Victor, could you show her why oh. star of our show today? Tiara? Hey, you can you hear me? Gil, Victor? Yes. Gilbert, show her why she's the star of our show today. Tiara? You just muted yourself, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will tell you why you're the star. Yes. Everybody's got photo algo? There we go. Yes. <laughs> oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations. And you, you were able to get away for the weekend, yes? Tierra? Yeah, I went hiking. Uh, I went to this log cabin, so I was out in the woods. Good choice. Very good choice. I was there for like three days. I actually just got back like an hour ago. Okay. So why don't, why don't we start with you? Where, where, where were you born? How did you end up in Washington, D.C.? And, and why did you choose boxing? And boxing and police work. How do you put that together? Well, I'm, I'm from Fort Myers, Florida. I was born and raised in, in Fort Myers, Florida. And then I went to college for four years in Columbus, Georgia, where I studied criminal justice. But I started boxing, it's been so long, like I was 13 years old because where I was from, you, you had to know how to fight. You know, you had to know how to fight unless you were not gonna make it. And two of my other cousins were boxers. I played all sports. I went to college on a full ride scholarship for track and cross country, but I was always a boxer and, and it's been my passion. I, I, it's like, I can't give it up. Do you, I know you're with Lou DiBella. I mean, he is totally crazy about you. He's always Tiara, Tiara, Tiara. <laughs> find that the things that you've learned in boxing, for instance, when you get greeted with negativity on the street, when you feel incredibly frustrated, do you find that the things that you've learned in boxing have helped you get through this time? Yeah, especially with everything that's going on right now, boxing has taught me an enormous amount of discipline. Whereas right now the police are being attacked, you know, for everything that's going on in the media right now. And we're being persecuted but like I try to let people know, not all police officers are the same. But the world doesn't see that. The world does not see that right now. You know, it's very unfortunate what happened. What happened shouldn't have happened. And so now all police are taking the hit here in Washington D.C. They've been rioting, and we've never had riots in in Washington D.C. They have started to burn police cars. Uh, fight police. It's a very dangerous time right now. But boxing has taught me so much discipline and restraint. You can cuss me out. You can, you know, come to my face and I, I won't flinch. I won't budge because boxing has taught me, you know, restraint. Right. Well, Dimesh, working in, in Coney Island, which is one of the roughest areas in New York, besides which you now have beaches and clubs, people are going to want to go swimming. People are going to definitely be pulling off that those masks and running around. Um, how do you deal with it physically when people with the virus coming around and everything? How do you deal with it physically when they will not listen to what you are asking them to do for their safety? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, once again, so thank you guys um, for Call me here on this chat. I recognize many, many faces here. Nicole, Sonia, Eugil, Mauricio. Um, you know, Coney Island's been good. You know, they've been behaving lately. But what really 
hurt me was that, you know, for the past couple of days, there were a lot of protests at Barclays Center. And, you know, Barclays Center to us, to the boxing community, as the second, you know, second home, second mecca to the boxing world. And to me, that hit hard. You know, I was standing there last night for 20 hours. And, you know, I just got home this morning um, from wow. protecting that ground. And, you know, we try to be as peaceful as possible with people and try to protect Barclays Arena because the protesters were really trying to get in there and destroy the arena. And I think that for boxing, it would have been really, really bad. And, um, you know, I hope we find our peace and unity soon. It's very important that we do that. And so how do you deal with it when you're confronted on the street? Being that you are a 13 and one with six KOs, I mean, I mean the impulse to probably say, don't bother me. How do you deal with it? Where do you find the strength to focus and really, really try to send some, what of a positive vibe to people who are coming in your face like that? I think, you know, you know, at this point, it comes down to the mental abilities of a person. I mean, we, as boxers, we train, you know, it's a lonely sport. So mentally, we always have to be ready. We always have to be there. And, you know, like, before we were talking about mental health and how people commit suicides, you know, for us in boxing community is a, is a rare thing. But unfortunately, in police, it's it's very common. A couple of days ago, there was a police officer who committed suicide. And it's very important for us to spread awareness, you know, to talk to somebody. So, you know, I appreciate that boxing made me stronger. It, it, it made me mentally strong, physically strong. And that's what it comes down to, you know, standing there on your feet, and you have people screaming at you, cursing at you, throwing water bottles, I mean, throwing rocks. You know, I think just mentally, you just have to be prepared and be ready. So I'm glad that boxing helped me out in that. Nicole, do you find, what do you find more dangerous, being in the ring or being in a hospital, which is rampant with COVID? I will say being around COVID every day with us horrifying but I think like the basic sentiment of boxing is to protect yourself at all times and that's something I carry with me every day. I walk into the hospital, I put my mask on, I wash my hands and I mean it's just like boxing. It's horrifying but I choose to do it. And it's just the choice that I make every day. You know, I chose to be lighter because I enjoy the adrenaline rush. I chose to be a nurse because while I get the adrenaline rush, I'm still able to help people. It's very difficult to hear your audio and I really want to hear what you're saying. Victor, is there anything that we can help Nicole with? Did yeah, I just want to make sure that she has the phone uh, closed. Now it's closer, maybe it would be better and check if the microphone is not uh, blocked with something. Can you guys hear me now? Is it better? A little better. If you can get a little closer, it would be even better. <laughs> so I, I, have, a little, I, I have a question that I really want to ask. What do you find when you're in the hospital? What do people need the most? What do you think they um, need? So for the nurses, a big fight with PPE. Um, we needed masks, we needed gloves, we weren't finding things that we needed. And um, thankfully now, due to the governor, he made a, a rule that we get a new mask every day and we're all very grateful for that. But I think also we really need people to take care of themselves so that they don't have to come in and see us. You guys don't want to see me at work. Don't come see me at work. Wash your hands, wear your mask, you know? Great. Thank you. Sonia, teaching students online, it's so different without the physical contact. First of all, do they know you're a world champion? How does that feed into it? And I know they're not bullying you. That I know oh. for sure. No, they're not bullying me and they have all my stats. They come in and tell me they found out how much I weighed online and 
<laughs> and everything else. So they know everything about me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been very difficult, the whole transition. We had three days to get ready and, you know, the kids didn't have devices. We spent the first month ordering devices for the kids and, you know, it's still not 100%. You know, all my kids haven't even been delivered devices and if they have devices, they don't have Wi-Fi. So it's it's a big hot mess and you know if they have the wi-fi and they have the device sometimes the parents aren't pushing them to complete the schoolwork. so you know it's it's a big struggle i'd rather have them in the classroom with me where i can control them and and get them working and motivated so it's it's been really tough for all of us as, as teachers brad do you find the same thing definitely i mean i'm i'm a counselor and it's it's tough to get the kids on board you have to chase them down. Like the amount of times I call parents, like, is your kid around? Can I speak to them? Uh, a lot of them have the devices, just don't hook it up. They're into their video games. They're self-isolating. They're not, you know, I'm, at least I'm getting in touch with a lot of them, but it's still very hard to, for them to be consistent. And they also, they miss the interaction, which is tough for them. Do you find that um, the rate of addiction and such is, is rising or the fear of suicide among these young people as a social worker. What do you do to deal with that? Does sports at all come into play in terms of, of helping these students? So it definitely does. And you hear it on the news all the time with all these substance abuse uh, professionals, how because of so much isolation and boredom, it increased it. And we actually, I had a student who's, they found their cousin overdose. So, you know, we offered their support. We offered to try to give them my mentor actually got a whole list of like online counseling um, throughout like for all different populations and we offered them resources and so the students I work with sports not really the most of them are just into the video games and stuff but we try to give them all the skills to keep themselves busy and keep themselves motivated so they don't fall back in that set, set or that um, isolation feeling and feeling no motivation which I've been seeing with some of my students. Well, I, think, I think the first month they were like, yay, early vacation. They loved it. And then after a month, they were like, oh my God, we miss school. We miss our teachers. We miss our friends. So, yeah. you know, I think it's been a really hard transition for them as well, you know, being young and, and, and not being able to, to see their peers and their, and their staff and teachers of what they're used to in their schedule every day. Exactly. Exactly. It's more than just the, uh, the education, the interaction, they're learning who they are in schools and they just don't have it. I have a kid before who stopped doing his homework because he's just so sad. He has no motivation to do work. So I offered to do like an exercise class on um, Google Google Hangout on Saturday to keep get him motivated and up, like try to give him a nice little uptake so he can finish his work. We have a month left. So it's it's real. It's, it's really, it's tough for them. Do you also for physical exercise um, classes online, like a lot of a lot of the boxers are giving exercise classes because that builds the endorphs and gets them feeling good. Do the schools offer that? Does it well, help? we have our, our physical education teachers who have to upload assignments and videos for the kids mm -hmm. to work out. But you know, unfortunately, unless they're they're there, it's really difficult to get them to do it. You know, do they? Yeah. Um, I am. I am having uh, extreme difficulty with uh, one of my kids, the youngest. Uh, he's 13 years old and he's got classes, online classes, uh, but the, the, the motivation is at the lowest, the frustration, you know, he participates in school, but are there any dynamics that you can share for a parent? Uh, how can we get them uh, what do you say to your kids? Is there anything you can share? Well, you could create a reward system. You could create, you know, make a chart for your for your son or daughter and, and let them know when you complete these assignments, you know, they can er earn a prize that you could possibly take them somewhere they wanted to go or buy them something they wanted. And, you know, possibly that might work to get them motivated where they can see their progress and, and see that they're working towards something. Nice. Thank you. Michael, how has your job as a fireman changed since COVID? I mean, clearly we know what fire people normally do, but how has the job changed now? Um, 
for a little while, we changed that schedule. They made us change uh, to uh, straight 24 hour shifts. Um, and now we've gone back to our, our regular schedules, but uh, we just, they're making us uh, on our EMS run wear more PPE and uh, uh, a standard operating procedure. Can you explain that please? I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. Well, uh, normally uh, for any uh, runs, we would only put on what we deemed necessary at the time, but now we deeming everybody as if the, they were positive. So we have full mask on. Uh, we always had the gloves on, but definitely uh, making sure that we have all the uh, coverings and safety precautions. And do you find that the people that you come in contact are grateful to see you or, or do you deal with any kind of harassment? Um, no, it seems like everybody's happy uh, that we're there to help them. Great. So I'm asking basically, like, yeah. go I, ahead. You know, what is happening in the streets is the opportunity for the usual bad people to go out and, and, and create trouble. And I, 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 I do not know um, how to interpret, you know, when everybody should be home, when there's a, a world emergency, and then this comes up, it must be a very difficult uh, situation to handle in all aspects. The no. government, the society, but most importantly, you who are there, and uh, it must be so heartbreaking to to see the people uh, attack verbally or physically uh, when it was in reality just a, a a a small number of of the whole uh, number of policemen. I mean, what do you say? How can we help this process to, to alleviate and to make a difference? And how can we multiply the positive to go against this negative? Well, Mauricio, you know, um, as you can see the protests that are going on, for example, here in New York, you know, not everybody is a rioter. Not everybody is a aggressive protester. There are people who are protesting peacefully, who are marching. And we've seen videos, you know, people protesting with police officers, police officers taking the knees with the protesters peacefully. And I think that's something that we need to send, you know, that message, that awareness that needs to be raised. Because if we join as communities, you know, police officers and all our communities, you know, regardless of the race, I think that needs to be shown more often on the news than the negatives because we every time we put on news there's always something negative you know the coronavirus that's how many people died the police abuse and i think that there should be more positivity spread right now and especially for the young kids you know who are I mean, I'm surprised, you know, there are kids who are 12, 10 years old on the street with the protesters. They shouldn't be even there, you know. They get shot by accident, you know, they get hit with bottles. And a lot of people are complaining about that, but, you know, that's up to the parents. They need to teach them and raise this awareness of positivity and unity. And I think that the main problem is the mainstream media also that, you know, shows all this negativity. And I think that we as communities need to spread that awareness and show people that together, you know, like we say, you know, divided we fall, united we stand. Sonia, how does that play out in your classroom when you're speaking to your students about the incidents that happen? And I, I give that to you, Brett, also. How do you deal with your students during this time when they see these things? Well, first of all, I tell them, you know, that they should be peacefully protesting. And I also tell them that Nothing good happens after 9 p.m. So stay home because that's when the problems seem to occur when it gets dark at night. That's when, you know, the, the, riot, the, the protesters turn to rioters. So if nothing's good happening after 9 p.m., stay home. You know, and, and I told them that, you know, I understand the frustration, but I tried to get them to watch. Like I uploaded a Martin Luther King video for them today. 
how he led a peaceful protest and he changed the world, you know, without rioting, without looting. And, and he made a difference that way. And I'm trying to show them that, you know, that it's possible, but uh, you know, my, my 20 kids, you know, are only a small group of kids that I'm reaching. So I think that needs to be shown more. Mm -hmm. What about you, Brett? You're dealing uh, with children who are already challenged. Yeah, I mean, you know, I try to speak it, speak with them about it. They're not aware with it because uh, a lot of them do have intellectual disabilities or not, or some of them are not old or just not paying attention to it. But I try to keep them aware with all of it and ask them. A lot of them are African-American, too. So I give them like, I want let me hear what you want to say, because this is the way you're supposed to um, if you have a problem, you're supposed to sh talk about it. You're supposed to, you know, express your feelings. You don't want to um, hold it all in anything like that. You know, I discuss obviously the safety with them if they decide to go out or, or not. But um, I, you know, we, we try to talk about different ways because they are young. They are get they're going to be involved in this. They're going to experience this. So we try to teach them ways in the future. How could they make a change or how could they uh, deal with a conflict or if they're experiencing racism? Because it's, it's everywhere. So we talk about ways on how to handle it in all different situations. Tierra, what do you need from us? How can we help? You're up in Washington and in, in the wilds of Washington. So what can we do actually? I think uh, it's like most of most of you, you already said, uh, it's what the public views. It's what the public sees, the media. They only want to show negative. You know, they only want to show negative. They never show the great the great things, the good things, the the, the citizen that is helping the stranger, you know, the police officer that is buying grocery for the family of five who had no food. They, they never show the positive thing. And as, as an athlete, I try to make sure that at all time, I am doing something positive. Everything I put on my social media, I make sure it's, it's positive because there's already so much negativity in the world. You know, you can find negative things everywhere. So I always try to be the athlete that is doing right to, to be a great role model. I have two nephews that look up to me and I tell them all the time, I want to be your role model. I don't want some rapper on the TV that you'll never meet to be your role model. I don't want another athlete to be your role model. I want you to look up to me. That's why I make sure I do everything right. You know, I try my best not to show people when I'm angry. I try not to put negative things on social media. You know, I try not to engage in wobbles when people are going back and forth on social media I just try to be positive because I think that uh, we do need a positive light we, we don't have like like you like Sonia said Martin Luther King he was all about protesting and it was all peaceful and he led the nation you know the world you have people around the world who knows know his name because he was always positive I'm down for protesting I'll protest on my days off as long as it's peaceful you know when you try to do things with violence, that's not the way. Because then what, what it is that you're trying to get out, it, it gets clouded because they're only gonna see the violent things that you're doing. Nicole, how has this affected you? Well, my hospital is a little farther away from the protest, so we haven't had any patients come in because of that. But in healthcare, you do like see systemic inequalities and things like that, and as a nurse, like. I just do my best to advocate for all my patients and make sure that everyone is receiving equal treatment. Wow. Uh, Jill, we, we had a, a WBC talks uh, a few weeks ago and it was uh, all media. It was uh, the members of the social media. We did a panel like this. And I was so uh, surprised when um, Eli Segback he shared with us, uh, he said he has done countless stories on fighters on the positive note. You know, a fighter going out and doing what you do, uh, a, always the positive stories. And compared to a scandal, the numbers are unbelievable. The positive notes get very few hits, very few visits. Yet a scandal gets all over. And that's what the media does. That's what human nature is. If you go to the movie theater and you see the Bible or, or you see the exorcist, 
you want to go see The Exorcist. If you go to a video game, they play the blood and the and the all all those that are different. So we we part of this panel of today is to attack on that the what the media represents is not what society and what the human being uh, feels. And we're just so proud of uh, having members of our community like you who are invited to this panel and you are appreciated. But uh, we need to do this a, a uh, pay it forward uh, effort. We have to build a chain and start making uh, uh, positive news and, and get them out there. Because uh, what you do every day is just, uh, I cannot imagine the frustration to go out. Uh, Dima, you were, you, you told me 20 hours, huh? Yeah, last night, I just came back this morning, you know, and it's been ridiculous. But, you know, it's part of the job. And as an athlete, I mentally prepare for it. And, you know, I want to show the people that I am there to protect them and serve and listen. You know, the main thing is to listen to them. And I hope something soon changes because we need that peace, we need that unity, we need to stay together, you know, together we're stronger. You know, I also think they need to change, you know, instead of saying like a white cop kills a black man, they need to say like a corrupt cop kills an innocent man. You know, when they label it with, with the color that creates the problem, you know, because he's innocent until he's proven guilty, but he was a corrupt cop for what he did. You know, and I feel like they create more, you know, problems in society with race and, and, you know, it becomes more of a problem because people feed into that because that's what the nature of human nature, they feed into that negativity instead of saying it the correct way. It's true. Look, right? look, look, look at this, look, look at this picture. Uh, we have a white New Yorker, a Mexican, uh, Sonia, you're from, from Greece. Yes. Uh, where are you all from? This is the world. Yeah. And, well, and I, is... Mauricio, I was born in Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. This country. And, yeah. um, you know, it's very interesting to see all of us here together, you know. And I think this is what needs to be done in the communities. Yes. Uh, Tiara, where are you from, Tiara? I'm from Fort Myers, Florida. From Florida. So I'm going to go back almost to my first question is the principles that we learn in boxing are completely opposed to what's going on now. Discipline, self-respect, you know, diversity, sportsmanship. Maybe everyone in the world has to box. <laughs> That's the answer. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've taken a lot of... Uh, courage has been the biggest gift for me from boxing. You know, it's it's taught me a lot of courage. It's given me a lot of courage to be to be a boxer and be an athlete and jump into the ring with only me, my you know, my opponent and the official. So it, it's been a really, really you know, courage building sport for me. Dave, what do you tell Ella with when all this is going on? I mean, I'm I'm pretty straight. She's young. She's only eight, but I'm. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, she's young. She's only eight years old, but I'm very straightforward with her. I try to be, you know, open her eyes for what's going on. So, she, you know, she is prepared. She's growing up so fast because of this. Um, but she's definitely be, you know, she's definitely affected by the homeschooling. She was a very social person. Um, whereas my other daughter was more of the, you know, quiet type. She's actually thriving in the homeschooling class. Two ends of the spectrum. That's not me uh, with the whistles. Uh, the, I've seen both ends of the spectrum with my daughters. Um, one really thriving with the homeschooling, and one really having a tough time. Um, and even for the parents, um, I think it really opens everyone's eyes to how much uh, you know school teachers do for us. Um, and it's just, I'm I'm really trying to, like I said, always look for the positive. Um, to come out of this. And, and I do think there is going to be a lot of positive things. Um, again, the media is maybe not portraying that. Um, but just being out here, uh, too, in the Midwest now, 
um, there's whole communities helping with cleanups, um, donating meals. Um, you know, it's, it's just really uh, the outpouring of support um, is there. It's just not getting enough uh, notice. Is that why your company does so much charity? I mean, it, it feels good, you know, part of it, you don't want to make it always a photo op, you know, there's a fine line between, you know, trying to hey, promote a brand when you're helping someone. So it's, they struggle with that a little bit, um, but you know, it's, uh, it, it feels good to help. Michael, your yeah. group is like a team. It's almost like a boxing team. I mean, you live together for X amount of time and then you break up. I mean, how has this affected you? You're, you're not boxing. The, the fire department is really, really into it. So have you found tempers are flaring or everything is sort of okay? What's going on with the, with the fire department? Well, fortunately, as a team, we haven't had a chance to work out together. Um, and the team's made up from uh, guys and girls from all over the, the city. So we got boxes from the Bronx, from Brooklyn, Queens, um, but we've been keeping ourselves uh, busy with work. So, you know, even if we, the gym was open, we probably wouldn't be able to get that much training with all the work we've been doing lately. But even in the firehouse, you're like a team. You're like living together for like, what, 48 hours or a week or something. I mean, there has to be a way to get rid of that energy. And now that sports and boxing is not a part of it. Do you find that tempers are flaring or that you're able to like chill or... No, well, we've, we've worked together as a team because, and that's what's great about boxing is that we all bring that team spirit from the firehouse to the actual boxing uh, team. And uh, I think we're all working well together. Um, like, like I said, we're all, it's a challenge. It's another challenge, a different kind of challenge, and we're working through it together. Jill, your microphone is soft. But I would like to ask Nicole, I think there's a lot of pressure on the hospitals now. And in sports, you know how to handle pressure. But how is this happening now at the hospitals? Well, I feel like, first of all, things were horrendous for a long time. It was very scary going into work every day. But it may sound like an oxymoron, but a lot of the skills that I have in nursing and like the strengths I have in nursing, I carry with me from boxing, like being courageous in the face of the unknown and being brave when the world is chaotic and being able to stay calm in chaotic situations. You know, um, I typically work in the operating room. I specialize in neurosurgery, but with the coronavirus, like the operating rooms were essentially shut down and I was floated to a, an ICU and taken out of my comfort zone. And while every day was really scary going to work, I carried the basic tenements of boxing with me, protect myself at all times and just try my hardest. Yes. Hands up. <laughs> Good Good yeah. And Brett, you are, you're in your home 24 seven. You have absolutely no reason to leave your house. Now you can't work out, you can't do anything and you're dealing with very troubled students online. Mm -hmm. You don't see them, you can only hope they show up for their sessions. How is that affecting you? I mean, it's definitely frustrating. I mean, you, you have a job and besides that, you care about the kids, you care about the family, you hope they are like, yeah, I'm in a bad situation, but I can't leave it in self, I'm very lucky. So I have a job and I'm safe and I'm healthy, my family's healthy. So I look at it that way when these kids don't have it or not as fortunate as I am. So all I wanna do is give back and try to help these kids. And yeah, it's tough. And I mean, I try to do my workouts here and everything to help myself, my, my mental status uh, to be calm rather than build up. But it's definitely frustrating and it's, it's, it's tough. But you just try to keep thinking positive. You try to keep promoting. You tr you just keep trying and trying and trying to hopefully you get these kids to get consistency with them. So I want to ask you all three questions. Start with you, Sonia. What is the best part of your job? What is the hardest part of your job? And how can we help you? Well, the best part of my job is being able to still have the opportunity to connect with my kids. Um, you know, the worst part of my job is that I'm not physically with them and I can't motivate them. And, you know, as far as you guys helping, I'm not sure. I mean, that that's really a tough, tough thing. I would have to think about it. You know, it's, 
I mean, I don't know what, what the WBC can do, you know. To... In general, what can we do? What can we do? I mean, you can, you can motivate your, your nieces and nephews. You can speak to them. You can tell them that this is going to pass and that they need to, you know, still stay focused and work on their education and, and you know, figure out a plan, write some goals down. I had my kids write goals in the beginning. You know, what do you want to improve on? Do you want to improve your diet? Do you want to still work out in the house? You know, I'll teach you how to do push-ups. I was shadow boxing with some, you know, so that, that might be helpful, but it, it's, it's a really difficult time right now. Of course, I mean, it's about survival. It's not about writing the great American novel. We're just going to get through this, and we will get through it. Brett, well, you know, I work. I work in a very economically disadvantaged area, you know, and I worry about my kids eating. Well, mm -hmm. fortunately, my my school is a feeding zone, so they're giving out three meals a day to the kids because, you know, that was my worst fear. I would be like, oh my god, these kids aren't going to have breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you know. So. That, that, you know, they're stressed out. Well, I'm stressed out too. I was more worried about that than I was them doing their academics. I was worried about them getting hot meals and food. Absolutely. Survival. Survival during a difficult time. And mm. Brett, what about you? The best, the worst, and what can the public do to help? The best, it's, it's the little things. Because, like, my, I, I work in schools that are low, like lower socioeconomic, and, you know, it's all survival with them. Um and just the idea that they can have these little conversations just to see differently is just, it's priceless. It's priceless seeing a little change here and there because you hope that they gather stuff for the future because it's change is not, is not, doesn't really happen right away. So those little comfort, those little things just, it's makes you want to go back next tomorrow. The worst part is just, it's just, it's, this is the situations they're in. It's just tough seeing it. They're given a, a hand of cards, which is just, it's, it's, I don't, I can't always, I can, can't always empathize with them. I listen to them, but it's hard and it's just, it's, just, it's sad, but you hope to give back and try to give them any resources they need and how you got and how the WBC can help. Like I said, I'm not sure. I mean, hopefully the students see stuff like this, seeing people with all different backgrounds have conversations. They're all, um, we can all be together in one, talk about all different type of topics. Um, just promote positivity. I mean, stuff that you guys have been doing, I think it's just, it's great as it is. What if one of our athletes went online with you and just gave some kind of wonderful inspirational talk? We do that all the time. I would, that would be awesome too. As I know we, at one of my schools in the Bronx, they actually have a, um, they do some like, they, they have a punching bag there for the students who are really angry, who get a little frustrated and angry. So instead of breaking a glass mirror or whatever they said go to the punching bag and a lot of the kids are into that kind of stuff so I think seeing someone who maybe been in the same, same situation they've been and has strived through it through the tough through the negativity and everything I think they would enjoy that yeah well let's stay in touch with that and my best part of your job the worst part of your job uh, best part of my job is being able to help people. The worst part of the job is probably when you're there to help people, it's usually the worst day of their life. So, uh -huh. you know, that's sometimes tough. Um, and then for the WBC is just, you know, tell people to, uh, if you could just pass the word, everybody be safe, be safe out there, wash their hands, be careful about who they come in contact with. And then, you know, when it comes to the protesting, go ahead and protest, but when it starts to get violent or bad, then, then maybe it's time to call it a night and go home. 9 p.m. <laughs> and, and Tiara, birthday girl? <laughs> so the best part of my job, of course, is saving the day. You know, uh, <laughs> no, one, no one calls the police when they're having a great day. No one does that. We don't get calls like, hey, we just want to tell you that we're having a fantastic day. We get <laughs> terrible calls. You know, we get calls when someone needs help. Um, and so I, that's, that's my favorite part of being a police officer is that I know that I'm here to save the day. Uh, I think the worst part of my job is, and this is something that a lot of police have to deal with. Uh, the worst part of my job is not being able to help feeling helpless, feeling hopeless when you're the one that's called to come save the day and then leaving knowing that you couldn't because 
some there are some moments when there's nothing we can do to make better the situation that we came you know whether it be the the home where the parents uh the parents aren't really parenting their kids you know don't make them go to school don't show them uh you know the love that a parent should show their child which makes that child go out and commit these crimes and things of that nature so that's the worst part of my job as far as the WBC I think that you guys can well first of all I think you guys are making a difference um but I think if you would not force or mandate but if you would reach out to your WBC champions and just ask them with their social media platform to just post positive things you know people look at that Everyone's always on Twitter. Everyone's always on Instagram. Everyone's always on Facebook. And with your WBC champions, they have, you know, so many hundreds of thousands of fans and people look up to them. You know, people go to their pages. And I think that if they would start spreading more positive, that would make a huge difference. You know, even during sports, be more sports-like, you know, stop everything like for my opponents we're opponents I don't hate you I don't wish any harm to to toward you I want to win but I'm I'm still not uh, attacking your character and one thing I just I hate going on social media watching other athletes especially boxers attack each other with violent words cussing each other out on on social media I can't stand that you know we're athletes we're supposed to be positive role models we have parents who who their children are looking up to us, you know, and we have to be that light. We have to be that positive light. So I think that you guys could get, you know, your best champions around the world to just start spreading more positive thoughts, more positive pictures on their social media. And, and it would make a difference. That's great. That's great. And we do strive for that. We, in fact, we even did a, uh, Mauricio had a video done when he felt that the uh, domestic violence was being, was raised because of all of the pandemic. The champions went out in Spanish and in English, did a beautiful video saying, don't blame each other, try to love each other. Um, top, top champions, and we, we put that out. But again, the media doesn't pick up on that as much as they pick up on the terrible things. I love your ideas though, Tiara. And I can see why you were the 2019 uh, <laughs> of the year. <laughs> and for you, Dimash. Um, for me, I think the best part of the job, I think, is, you know, being the real action hero, um, you know, like, like Tara said, saving the day, um, you know, going above and beyond and coming home knowing that you did something positive. Um, the worst part, I believe, you know, to all of our professions, I mean, to all the cops, obviously, is the stigma that's going around right now. They hate, you know, I mean, the other day, I had a call, you know, um, a woman, she couldn't breathe and I was outside giving her CPR. So while I'm giving CPR, I have these teenagers breaking my, my car right in front of me. And at that point, I just couldn't believe my eyes. You know, they're seeing me helping somebody and at the same time, they're going and destroying, you know, property, doing all these things. So I think that's the, that's the the worst part of my job, I think it's just the stigma and the hate that's going around. And for WBC, like Tiara said, you know, you guys have a lot of champions who can reach out to the world, you know, we have champions from all, all of the parts of the world, you know, any country. And they have um, great popularity. And if they can spread awareness, spread the positivity, I think that would be great. I agree. What would you all say? What would you be, what would you say be a hashtag? Let's come up with a hashtag right now that uh, we can implement today with all our platform, all our champions. Great a, idea. a slogan or hashtag, help us out. Let's come up with, with uh, something. I can see the brain working there. Come on, come on, you can do it. All right, we'll come back to you, but think about it. We're not gonna shut this program down till we got a hashtag. Nicole. Together, together we are champions. 
That's a good one. It's a good one. Nicole, the motivated, you know. I heard a voice. Nicole, the best part, the worst part, and what can we do for you? Um, well, I'll say the best part of my job is really like making a difference, like seeing a patient that we didn't think was going to make it to have a complete turnaround, you know, getting these COVID patients off the vents and discharging them and sending them home to their family. Like, it's an amazing feeling. The worst part of my job are the patients who don't make it, you know, that's always hard to deal with. But I think also like on a personal level, the worst part of my job right now is like, I feel like a walking germ. So, so I've been very much self-isolating. Like I can't come home and hug my parents because I don't know, am I a carrier? I'm exposed every day. So that's the worst part. And I think what everyone in the world can do to really like help make life easier for nurses is social distancing, wash your hands, wear your masks. Like COVID isn't dangerous for everybody, but for the people it's dangerous for, it's terrible. And if you guys could spend five minutes in one of the ICUs, you'd never want to leave your house again. You know? I think just everybody taking care of themselves and washing their hands, wearing their masks and doing the right thing as frustrating as it is would make my life so much easier because then you wouldn't have to come visit me at work. No, we, we don't want to visit you at work, Nicole. <laughs> you, Jim. And what about, what about you, David? The best, the worst, and what, maybe you have that smoke that Mauricio wants. <laughs> uh, I would say the best part of my day is, is really, um, getting to see, um, you know, other frontline, frontline work is really helping, you know, not just seeing it on the news, um, actually seeing it firsthand. Um, the worst part of my day, I would say, is just realizing that even though every little thing makes a difference, just knowing that, you know, this world is a big place and you're hoping just other people can, you know, do their part because, uh, you know, it really sometimes seems that the deeds you do are really making no effect, but all those deeds together and all those people together can make a huge change. Um, so there was a quote, I, I don't know if I actually I heard it from who, but something with sand, maybe Mauricio with the sand um, from the beach, you know, the sand alone looks at the waves coming in and, you know, one grain of sand is nothing, but all together it can, you know, push back the ocean. So, uh, we just got to stay positive. And I think what the WBC is doing with these talks is, is great. I've been following along. Um, my daughter was involved in one a few weeks ago. She was still talking about it. Um, so, so this alone is bringing some real, you know, joy to my household. And uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. And um, I'm just looking forward to brighter days ahead. Well, we all are. And it's so much about respect. It's so much about bringing out the best in other people, I mean, bringing out the best in ourselves, because you tend to get what you give in that sense. But I tell you, I, I, just a little glimpse into what you people do, I could not find it in my, I, I couldn't do what you do. I mean, it, these have to be the most difficult, and you have to have a passion for it, just like a boxer has to have a passion for it. Mauricio, what do you want to say? I just want to say that uh, I am inspired by by your deeds, by your uh, attitude, and I, you speaking as you have just said, I want, let's do something. Let's not leave it as a Zoom meeting, but uh, let's come up with a hashtag. Maybe we think we take the day, send to Jill the recommendations, and then we come up with something. And from this conversation, we're gonna move and make a move, a positive move, uh, something that uh, can get to, to the feelings of, of the human beings. I truly believe that most, uh, most of us in the world are good. The, the few are the ones that uh, are, are uh, hurting, but we are having to deal with the COVID-19 and the, so many other repercussions, direct and indirect. And the last thing that we need is to have a disruption in society and, and feelings and, and to have a segregation and racism and, and disturbances in any, any form of manner. Uh, I really think that the boxing world 
as we always have, can do something positive. And I would just, would love to come up with a little campaign coming out from today with your feelings, with your input, and we will structure it and go all, all out and, and make it worldwide. Absolutely. Boxing represents all of those qualities and you've demonstrated it, that we wish we could pass on to the world. It's like a microcosm of the world. If people from so many cultures and countries and economic groups can get along the way that we do, we should be able to do a better job in the world. So please, let's try and do this campaign as Mauricio said, we're really open for it. We'll do it, we'll do it, absolutely. Does anyone have any advice or anything they wanna say before we wrap it up? Tiara. Just to everybody, stay positive. Keep on doing what you're doing. This was an inspirational talk for me to hear everybody's individual stories, and I appreciate everyone. Tiara, what are you doing for the rest of your birthday? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I'll figure it out, though. But I would like to say to everyone that's on this panel, I appreciate you. Um, I love you and all that you do. Stay safe. Uh, be protected at all times and just be great. Never let someone tell you what you can and can't do, what you can and can't be. Uh, a few days ago, this lady, I was just speaking positive about uh, law enforcement and she was like, your one voice doesn't matter. You can't change anything. You're just one police officer. She put it on my Facebook and boy, did they let her have, have it. You know, uh, just never let someone tell you, you can't make a difference. You can make a difference. I can make a difference. Everyone on this panel can make a difference. Just keep believing in yourself and anything can happen. And we do have to say congratulations to Tiara and Dimesh. They won our Heroes for Humanity Awards also. It's great. Thank uh, you guys. <laughs> very much for special. You nominated by other people outside of your families. And we so appreciate the acts that you've done during, during this time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Jill, I, I would like to say something. Uh, I think what Nicole said about uh, protect yourself and I will add a counter punch the problems. The thinking, people are scared and they're reacting to that and that's the reason of this happening. If you forget about it and try to be smart, that would be different. Sonia said something really interesting. <clears throat> At the moment that we stop looking at men, woman, black, white, or whatever, and look at everybody as a person, as some individual that could be us or anyone else, that will make the difference. And we have to appreciate what people do for us. Policemen, nurse, doctors, teachers, uh, whomever is helping, we have to appreciate that. I just want to thank you, everybody. Thank all of you and each of you because you're working to do uh, the world better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Um, I would like to just thank you again. Thank you so much for your time, for your day-to-day -day lives that changes the lives of many of us. Uh, it's been a pleasure to share the WBC Talks with you. I look forward to seeing you in person in the near future. Let's stay positive. Uh, God bless and thank you so very much. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Love always wins. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Jill. Thank Your you. microphone is off. And this, is, this was round 49 of the WBC Talks. Stay home. Stay safe. Stay cool. Thank you, Jill. God bless. Bye.